Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we are going to be pushing into the top 1200, try to lock in our position with four days left. Uh, so we will be replaying a deck that I played a couple of days ago, or probably a week and a half ago now at this point. It's my best of one blue-white control list. Um, so the original list had a Fae of Wishes package, uh, it had a Nico Aris, it had a couple little tweaks. I've since revised it. The list itself, I am currently 13 and one with. The only loss was to the one Saltai Ultimatum list. So it feels really good against like the creature-based aggro decks. Um, Rogues is a bit tough, just depending on the sequencing of their counter spells. And Saltai Ultimatum is really just a matter if we could time our counter spells accordingly. Um, I've enjoyed this deck quite a bit. It's a non-Yorian build. Um, so really what we're trying to do, you have Glass Casket, Skyclave Apparition as ways to control the board. Um, this allows us to um, just kind of exile, which is more important in this format than destroy because you have stuff like Selfless Savior, um, the 3-1 that gets indestructible. Um, it also can hit non-land permanence, Skyclave Apparition, which is really useful. We have access to five hard counters and negate and saw coming and one jawari disruption as ways to kind of tempo out the uh, saltai decks um, i have a enchantment mini package with arcan of sun's grace you have omen of the sun this was a new addition to gain some life and get blockers early uh, against like saltai alt it's a good way to pressure them at instant speed uh, omen of the sea and else with conquer's death i switched nico aris back to teferi um, I think Teferi's phasing out ability with uh, minus three is more useful, as well as it can fuel our Elspeth Conqueror's death. There was a lot of times where I had Nicarus in hand and just didn't make sense to cast it, basically. Uh, but the main ways we win are either Dream Trawler or Shark Typhoon. Uh, this is a deck. If you enjoy hard casting Shark Typhoons, this is a deck. Uh, we also have Castle, Arden Vale. I have to kind of close it out. I got rid of the Crawling Barons and just played a second Field of Ruin to deal with the Faceless Havens. Um, so no wish board. There's a still from the old one that's sitting around. Um, but this is the deck. One card that I'm trying in instead of the Brazen Borrower for this run is Midnight Clock. This allows us to recycle our threats as well as gives us a little bit of a ramp into five mana, um, which is pretty useful in the build itself. So I'm going to start off here. We're at 1035. I'm probably going to go for like two hours with this particular game set. So I will be cutting up the matches and I will include in this a uh, subset of decks. Um, so some of the good matches, see how it goes. Um, so the ratings will, might go up and down depending on how we're playing. Hopefully just up. Um, so let's pop into this standard rank blue-white control. See how it goes. As always, if you do enjoy the content, it would be greatly appreciated if you could drop a like, comment, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. It's a free and easy way to help out the channel. Um, if you do want to know when we go live on Twitch, you can always drop a follow there as well. Obosh means they're on adventures. Um, we don't have a sweeper. We don't have early plays. I think this is a mulligan. Oh, this is so much worse. Okay. Don't love binning both of these, but I think it's the right play. We need to play to the board, I think, so... We also have to consider that this is coming in tapped. We have 25 lands, and we managed to draw the two that come into play tapped. Um, let's go Temple of Enlightenment here. Another Skyclave's not bad. We want to keep them off the Henge here. Notably, we don't have an answer to Goldspan Dragon in hand. With the tap land here, I'm just going to go Trinome and then... Nope, new plan. Mm, so they get the card draw but then I give them an opening to potentially henge. I think we have to keep them off the card draw here. This is a bad start, having to multi five. Mm. 
gonna have to go trinome here unless we draw an untapped blind untapped blind one time Arkin's not bad the problem is here now we have to deal with stuff like bone crusher giant taking a hit for six if we can draw like uh, omen of the sun or omen of the sea would be good with Arkin. So they are on triple, okay, so there's the spell that we wanted. So I have a line here, I can take five. So I can take five, hope that we draw the land and then set up. I think we're doing that this turn because it leaves me pretty open because this at least will hold back this and this from attacking. If they attack with this, then that telegraphs that they have a stomp in hand. Because if I draw a land, then we're in good standings. It's an easy no block here. No double blue, no double red means no gold span, no all runs epiphany right now. This might just be Obosh to hand turn. Oh, this is the coma version. Yeah, we're dead here. I can't be. Ah, oh. no, we needed a land that turn. Without the land, if I had the land, then I could have conquered death coma. They still have Luca though. Doom scar. I mean. We gotta try play to our outs here. Okay, so let's see what they do here. They have coma so they could tap one thing down. I went with a plus, which is a really interesting line. I think we're just blocking like this. Because this just gives it indestructible for the turn. Easy block there. So we're going to try to attack with the Arkin into Luca. Just put him down. Okay, that's all Ren's Epiphany. Do have Doom Scar. So I Doom Scar here. They get 3 9, so I'm dead on board. See what they do here. I'm trying to get. Oh, they let me attack. So I think based on that. So here's the thing I could conquer's death, I get rid of coma. They tap, tap, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I think that's our line. Because then I could Doom Scar and then have this already on chapter two. So they do need to, they can tap down both my things, but they have to sacrifice their creatures. Luca has been cost reduced. Ah, they got 
the Brazen Bar. That should do it. They bounce this. It's actually pretty good because this lets me play around the Doom Scar. Or at least get rid of this for the Doom Scar turn. You have all runs. Yeah, I can't do anything. All right. Well, that was a multi five. You can't really do much in that case. If we drew a land that turn instead of Omen to answer Coma before they kind of snowballed, maybe. That's like a, a tough matchup, I'd say. Not impossible, but tough. I think this hand's fine. Leading on this, because this lets me go untapped here, so this can help me dig for my fourth wind. We also have the option to scry as well. So this could be like a 60 card variant of ultimatum. Usually don't see Temple of Malady. I think here I do want the fourth line to be untapped. Ooh, that's nice. So They likely have removal for this Arkin. So I think we're just going to play this out and start pressuring them. Try to bait out something. This could be a Blood in the Snow style deck. We have blockers for two turns, could potentially put up the double block here. Okay, with an omen, that's fine. What I want to try to do here is find a counter spell. Kind of like Stonewalls are more aggressive line. They can go Garrick here, which is going to be pretty backbreaking. Okay, that's fine. Second Solemn. I think we're just, we'll give him a card here. Keep them off Solemn. Because they can always blow us out afterwards. Um, I think here I'm just gonna set up a scry here. Sock coming's great. So we don't hit our land drop this turn, but I could play this in a way where like we could have taken a chance, but if we didn't, this is a, a critical turn where I want to have a counter magic. These are colors that can answer a hard casted typhoon. Try to find a line here. Okay, so they'll take my Shark Typhoon here. Actually, what we'll do. 
We'll give him the choice. Because whatever they don't take, then I have a castable spell. If I draw another land, then I can go to fairy here. And that's the nice thing with these foretell cards, you get to play around the removal. That's fine. We're at 20 life, we just need to play around their like big spell for the turn. I actually like both of those. So this might bait out like one of their um, bindings. Get rid of glass casket. I'll wait for this to pop off first. So if they decide to go binding here, then I can phase out one of the Solemns. Notably, they don't have any Faceless Havens out this game yet. So we'll just shape our hand some more. I'm actually going to keep the Field of Ruin. Um, we can take out the Castle or if they have Faceless Haven. Both are reasonable. Okay, so we got the Doom Scar. Let's get rid of the Glass Casket here. Um, and we will do this. Actually, let's do this, play out this, and then just activate this, use your mana here. And the nice thing here is now we can just get this glowing and then this will shape up our hand. I probably should have kept this up, to be honest, because I could have field of ruined their castle. But they're taking a lot of damage here. Just shape up our hand here. I think... Like their hand's gotta be just all removal anyways, so we can bin this. I'm gonna crack this this turn, so that way we can shape up our next draw. They get to draw two here, but this will also make it harder for their castle to be activated. Um, so one, two, three, I can do it all. Mm. I actually don't mind. I think we do it like this because what I can do here is With the land drop for turn, just pay the mana here. We can start making tokens to pressure them. This is actually pretty good because they can't really castle without taking a ton of damage here. They do have these wolf willow havens, so that's something to consider. Another sad robot's fine. Yeah, I 
I think what we want to do here is find another sweeper. So we'll just scry here. Yeah, I'm going all in here. It's kind of good for us. Get rid of those lands. Okay, with another Conqueror's Death, I think we're okay to do this. That takes them off a card draw, at least for the turn. I think we are going to Field of Ruin this turn, like on their end step. We'll take out their castle, and then that leaves me with enough mana to Midnight Clock. So here what we're going to be able to do is get... So let's set ourselves up. Oh, we're actually down a mana, so we can't Midnight Clock, but that's fine. Glass Casket's not bad here, because I could just make a blocker and then Casket. I get my Arkin back as well. Yeah, because we can kind of continuously stonewall one of these. I imagine their hand is literally just all removal. So we'll see a removal spell come in here. Four mana eliminate. Charge up the clock. Teferi's actually nice here. I think we do Arkin though. This comes in with a plus one counter. So this gets around Heartless Act. Well, gets rid of one removal spell. I think we're fine in terms of position. This will pop off in two turns. We get a full hand. We get to shuffle back our Arkans. That's the easiest counter of our life. So the question is, do I want to scry here? I think we're taking two here. Um, I can pump this up. Yeah, I think we're just going to do the clock here. Because the thing is, this is going to shuffle on their turn anyways, so then I won't have the Ugin play. Okay, saw it coming's nice. Gives me another option. This is going to be like as good as possible. We'll set up here. And then I have this omen to flash in on end step. We just want like one counter for the Ugins.
this lets us pressure them as well. Second counter is great. Ooh, and negate. Could see removals coming here, but you know, we paid three mana. The more they won for one us, it's fine. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep. We'll keep that open to cycle. We're at a good amount of mana here. So Midnight Clock has felt very good this game so far. Okay, there's our win con. All right, it's closing time. Big old shark. Sure. If they want to spend sweepers, it's fine. We're not going to fight over sweepers. Their hand's likely full of them. That's an easy counter. Interesting they have Warrant Clex. That's an easy counter. Could be Blood Chief's Thirst here. Okay. So I'm actually just gonna hard cast this. This plays around Extinction Event nicely. Um, because these are even, I don't wanna play more into the board. Okay, so they have Crawling Barons. That's an easy Field of Ruin target. Do this. See what we got. Really just looking for like another counter here. Jawari's not bad. At the very least, Jawari taxes them. See if they pump it twice. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna feel the ruin it anyways. Easy game. Um, I think we're just passing the turn here. Sure. Make a token here. Scry here. Easiest keep of my life. Bye, friend. Midnight Clock MVP. Takes us back up to 10.30. Probably want to try to get up to like 300 if possible. Teferi did some stuff. That matchup really wasn't about us getting an Arkin that was going to live. Like their hand was pretty full. Uh, 
All right, 489. If we win this, we should jump up a bit. I'm going to keep this. So it's a little awkward, but we're against Yorian, so having both castles in hand is good. The Doomscar is not great in this matchup, obviously, but... I think we're going to go this this turn. Let's me get these in play afterwards untapped. I guess I could have scryed one more time, but... I think what we want to do is... Get Midnight Clock going. This is worse against like Binding of the Old Gods. They have Negate. Okay. So they are on a more controlling version. I'm gonna do this this turn because I can get this aside, make it seem like a counter spell, and then start omening, because these are just dead cards at this point. It's actually not terrible that this got, like, it's not the best, but out of cards to get negated. Okay, they omen the omen. Top top's not great. We do need a counter spell here. Neither of these are good. Because hmm. we're probably going to have to Doom Scar away this Yorian. I actually think we're just doing this. Because I'm going to scry with this. And then that gives me six lines for the following turn. So I can have counter and Doomscar available. Then have double omens bad, because now even though we deal with this, they get basically three cards. One from here, two from that. So this is where like the Yorian matchup's not great when we don't draw any counter spells. They're not Yorian this turn. Okay, they go binding. I'm actually going to keep the Typhoon. Mm. So the Arkin could bait out. I can... I think we're just going to scry here. We need to find a counter spell for their ultimatum turn. This Doomscar they might think is um, saw it coming. Get a lot of value here. Because now they're also up mana, so Jawari Disruption doesn't really do much. They likely have another line in hand. I think we need a counter spell. As much as I want Dream Trawler, they likely have like Extinction Event or something. Okay, we gotta bait one turn, no ultimatum, otherwise we're dead. Where are all the creature decks?
not super concerned about that. That's kind of like a bait spell. They only have two power on board, so. Can also just make like a two powered shark. They're just gonna rip all Ren's epiphanies after each other. The version's interesting. You don't usually see the temples. Yeah, we're dead. We dead. 80 cards, let's run running ultimate or running things. We have six counters, can't find a single one. Where them creatures at? If this is the case, then we might have to switch up our package a bit, go up to a second negate. Get off the Arkin plan. Yeah, I think we need second negate. Put Arkin back. Everyone's on Yorian today. I think for this turn, just in case they have like a duress style effect, I want to get that aside because then I can go Trinome here into Omen of the Sea or saw it coming. Maybe this is like a Esper Doom version. Nope, Salt Eye. So it's always a interesting conundrum. Do you counter their ramp effect? I usually play it as hold your counters for their highest impact plays. Uh, they typically, because it's best of one, won't have like counter magic. Our opponent did have the negate last game. Um, I think this is a double keep. This gives us a card draw. It also gives us something to scry afterwards so we can set up our draws nicely. They're going Elspeth Nightmare, that's fine. Mm. I think we're okay for lands now because we'll likely just draw into them. Doing this just because it filters our draw even more. I think we are getting rid of this though. So let's lay away this, let's hide it. So they'll probably take Conqueror's Death. That's like a clean answer to a lot of things. Maybe I wanted that land, because I do want to get to six mana with the saw it coming. Or sorry, the eight mana. I may want to try a version of this deck with Graven Lore. But we've built our deck to have more answers to the creature matchups, so we do hedge these matchups a bit worse. I'm 
versatility of this card. While Teferi's interesting, it means we don't have another land, and it puts us at the potential of getting ultimatumed. So I think we're binning both. I guess I could have kept it. Eh. Ended up paying off, but it was iffy. That's fine. You can omen. Really here, we're just... I think I maybe should have... Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Because if they have like Vorn Clex hard cast, then I just want to be able to cast this for three. I don't want to pay five mana for it. Their hand's probably all removal. One, two, three, four, five, six. The only downside with foretelling is you have less cards on the board or in your hand for the Dream Trawler effect. Um, I think we're binning both these. It's also only their combat step, but they can't do much with two mana. Um, because I'm just gonna doom scar their board. I think we just pass. want to find another land here. This isn't great in this matchup, so I can use it as fodder for Dream Trawler. Exiling something just leaves them with a bigger creature behind. We can take a point of damage here. I'd rather scry. Bottom, bottom's encouraging. Looking for like the negate. Probably keep another land on top. Okay. So I'm gonna keep the land this turn. Keep Shark Typhoon for next turn only cause we're pretty telegraphed what we're doing this turn in terms of countering here or destroying everything here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Vesica's Chariot. I think that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll exile the chariot here. So they could hit me for a 4-4. Four, four. Heartless Acts. It's 
eight power on board. I think we get rid of one here. They either have to use another removal spell here. Born Clex. That can also go away. Take the damage here. Shit. That's not good. That is certainly not good. Certainly not good. In the case they want to trade, that Valky is coming up super clutch. They know this is a counter anyways, so they can just transform to Dream Trawler here. Make this three power. We need to find a sweeper here. Three Doom Scars. Have two of them at the bottom. It's not great. So, want to try to dodge a removal spell one turn here. Gonna have to uh, shuffle up here. Conquers death, but it doesn't do a whole lot. I think we're just on blocking duty. And then using this to cycle. Need to find a sweeper. Let them go to their draw step first. Shadow's verdict. I think I need to counter here. I need the blockers. I can't afford to take that damage. And I do think I'm going to throw in the Skyclave in front of the cat here. They have second Shadow's Verdict that can't really do much here. Binding. All right. Doomscar? Not Doomscar. That Valky came up so clutch stealing my Dream Trawler because now it's just given them like never ending card advantage.
Doomscar. 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 We're dead anyways. Yikes. All right, so didn't go as sweet as planned. I think we're definitely running into an issue with a lot of these Yorian decks. Do need access, I think, to a second negate. I think going like this would be fine. It's almost because the problem is a lot of our threats do come at even CMC. So I think what we do is we cut the arc in and we go back to the brazen borrower plan with second negate involved. We'll try one more with this and then. You know, immediately now we're going to run into uh, mono white or mono red. Always the case. Okay, so not a Yorian player. Playing this out first. I can set up that, play this out likely, and just put out the Doomscar. I want to know what lands we draw before committing this to white, just so that way if we draw blue, okay, so it is a mono red deck. Well, the thing is we do have Glass Casket, so that can deal with something early. I also have the Shark Typhoon I could cycle for one. This also conceals information. I don't know if anyone saw, but we're using Chandra Sleep. Ooh, Rakdos. Okay. We got a Roberto. I think we're going to do this. I have Omen to try to dig for land. I can also just hold this up. If they play a non-basic, this looks like some sort of Rakdos aggro, which like I said. Um, I think we want to find our land here. It's not white mana. But it gets us closer to this Conqueror's Death, which I think is fine. I think just hitting line drops is important here. We can also just Shark Typhoon for two here. Humor Storm Predator. White mana. Not white mana. Because they likely have like a steel effect, I don't want to do it right now. Okay, so they go robber, that's fine. Tell me that was my white source. That's fine. So we're hoping for no Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, 
So we take six here. Next turn we're taking seven. I do have this Omen of the Sun. Sky Grave Shade. Oh, Jesus. This is really what's going to happen. We're just never going to draw lands. This is really frustrating. Problem is like they haven't even played out a non-basic. This kind of buffers our turn for us. Take the shade off. Deal with Robber for a turn. Just give me a white source. Need to exile this. Could be them just digging for a land here. Yeah, we're dead. Can't do anything. That was super frustrating. Alrighty. Time to go back to the drawing board. Well, that game, like, how many lines did we see never hit a land? That's just kind of unfortunate. Anyways, going to wrap this one up. We'll switch decks and catch you next time. Thanks for watching.